What's up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. All you new subscribers, I'm Barbas. If you haven't hit the subscribe button, go down and hit it because at 3300 subscribers, we're having a raffle. Today, we are working inside. I did get the water pump, the tensioner, and the timing belt. So that's the reason why we're inside. We're gonna be assembling part of this engine. Um, I think that I'm only gonna be able to put the water pump because of the fact that these bolts are kind of tight on the flywheel. So it's not gonna let me spin this guy to get this guy on the arrow over here to set up my timing on my gear. So, yeah, that's, I think that's what's going to happen. I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for this video. Um, I think we can also get the tensioner on here without having too many problems. As soon as we get both of those in the morning, I'm going to probably remove these bolts, release my engine, set it down on the floor, and set up my timing gear set up my timing belt and put the cover back on and put the the pulley back on there um before we could set up the transmission and hook it up on here there is one small problem the problem is this right here this dowel pin it's okay on this side, but if you look at the one on this side, you can see that it's a little bit broken right here and right here. So I might just send it like that. I really wish I would have gotten a dowel pin. I did go to the junkyard and I did search for one, but I couldn't find a, a car that had the transmission off. I wasn't about to take a whole transmission for something that I could just order online for eight bucks and spend a whole bunch of hours taking it apart at the junkyard. So with that being said, I do not have this dowel pin. So I'm gonna attempt to use this beat up dowel pin to assemble my transmission. So let's just get started and set this water pump in place. Let me show you what I got. Here's the part number, if anybody needs it. This is for a D16A, D16A. The belt is 104 teeth. Here's the water pump. This water pump did come with the small little gasket that goes around this edging right here. So therefore, I'm not gonna use any RTV or any of that stuff. I'm just gonna put the little gasket on there and torque it into place. Here is the tensioner. The tensioner did not come with the spring. So I am gonna have to use the spring. If you guys remember, when I took my engine apart, I put everything into baggies and I labeled each baggie. So these are the bolts. Everything's in baggies right here. These are the bolts to the water pump. Here is the tensioner in this bag. And I still have the spring connected to it. So I'm just gonna remove that spring now and put it on my new tensioner. Everything is in baggies, everything is labeled. And everything that's on this table right here, and this thing that's for the head, I have it separate and I have it all also labeled and in baggies. All right, before I continue, I wanna show you guys this bolt right here. This is where the short bolt goes. There's four bolts, three of them are the same length, and then you have one short one. 
the short one goes here you would think that the short one goes up here but it does not the short one goes here if you try to put a long bolt in here all you're gonna do is you're gonna break it so make sure that the short bolt goes in here so I'm gonna open my baggie and pull out the tensioner that's in here So you can see this thing was like that it was like that and then I got my bolt right there here's my new tensioner I'm just gonna transfer everything over to this one right there and then my bolt right through there For the tensioner, I'm going to leave it loose. Um, make sure it slips through this guy right here. You guys can see it. That slips through the tensioner. Little bracket. And here is your spring. And it goes up to that guy. And like I said, I'm going to leave this loose. Just enough where I can loosen it by hand. And enough where that spring's not gonna get lost. Because if I go up like this, you can see it, it loses the tension and the spring can fall out. So I'm just gonna let it be loose. I'm gonna tighten it down by hand. And I'm not gonna do anything because I still gotta put my belt on there. So the next thing you wanna do is we're ready to put the little gear in there. When you put this little gear, you have this thing. There's one that goes on one side and the other one goes on the other side. It's gonna sandwich it together. When you do that, you wanna make sure that this one, so if, if you look at this, it's kinda like like this. It's, it's, not, it's not nice and straight. It's kinda like curved a little bit. So what you want is the curve to go towards the engine and you want it to be like this so the curve goes in and away from the gear so it's kind of like let me explain it as a dish like that it holds water like that it doesn't the side that holds the water would go in I don't know if that makes any sense but that goes in then your gear goes in your gear has a little arrow I don't see it on this side so it's gonna probably be on this side this side is getting oxidated so I'm gonna have to clean this before it goes in but if you see this right here there's a little tiny arrow right here like a little triangle and that little triangle needs to point to this little arrow that's right there you see a little arrow so when you point where is it this guy this little arrow with that little arrow you should be on top at top dead center and you got to set this correctly so you could set up the the timing mark as soon as you do that you got your next plate that's gonna go right there which is also one of these and when you put this one in this guy which is the same as that other plate that went in there so let's say this is an example let's put this guy in right here like that and then you got to put this guy in you're going to do the same thing that you did on that side you're going to do it out here so basically the dish part is going to go away like towards us so if you're looking at it and it's curved like this, you're gonna turn it and put it in like that. If that makes any sense. And I'm just explaining this because I wanna make sure that you guys assemble this correctly. 
I'm gonna clean this off and then I'm gonna go ahead and install it in there. And then I'm gonna have to get that timing mark over here before I can continue. So right now, I'm gonna go ahead and call it a night. It's pretty late. And in the morning, I will take these two off, put my engine on the floor, spin my crankshaft where it's at top dead center, um, put the other piece in there, put my cover, put this guy, and alternator belt, a whole bunch of little pieces that can go in there. And we will be ready to put the transmission on. We might even do the transmission if we have enough time. But I think this is going to be the end for now. So I'll see you guys in the morning, which will be in two seconds. Today's the next morning. And I'm going to attempt to buy that dowel pin at the junkyard. See if I can find it. So let's go to the junkyard and take a look. If not, we'll come back and continue assembly. I have to come back for this fender. Here's a four door. Another good fender. This one's a D17. And there's a dowel pin right here. I'm going to take this guy off. Try to take it off. See if I can take it with me. There's no need to take it off. There's one right here. Here's the dowel pin that goes over here. Here's another Civic. Another good fender. These D16s are everywhere. That's why I like these. wagon wish I would have got my hands on this wagon before it got junked here's a Honda Fit let me know in the comments below if I should come back for these wheels So mission accomplished, we got the dowel pin, and now I'm headed back to the house. Let me know about those wheels, if I should uh, pick them up. They're about $25 each one, uh, wheel and tire together. So let me know right away if I should get them, because I'm pretty sure somebody's gonna snag them up really fast. We're back at the house. The rain has started, so we're ready to pull this dowel pin out. You guys can see how the best shape that dowel pin was. I'm gonna get some pliers and try to pull that guy out so we can put the new one in. It was a pain to take off, but I got it off. You can see what it looks like. It was kind of rusty, the side that was inside of the block. The other side 
was pretty messed up they are exactly the same so I'm gonna go ahead and install the new one Dial pin is in and I checked this one and this one needed to be pushed in a little bit so I went ahead and I pushed it back in there so both of those doll pins are ready to go so I'm gonna go ahead and pull the pin off and remove my engine from the engine stand and set it on the floor on this right here change of plans I put it on the chair I took it off there and just put it on this chair that was right here and I went ahead and I spun this to this mark right here so we are going to continue assembly now that I got this little mark lined up with that mark what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this belt and I am going to place the belt in there so this belt is just going to go like this right on here then this is going to go around the back of this under the water pump and that's pretty much it for the belt right there so now we could put our little thing that goes on here the other piece I'll show you guys right now this is the one that I was talking about remember one goes on this side one goes on the other side and remember that the side that has the little dish is going to be facing away from the engine like that now we can put our cover on remember the tensioner is going to be fixed later on so don't worry about doing anything with that right now so i'm going to put some tension on this like that and I'm going to slip this cover on here. And that's pretty much it for the cover. He's got to put the bolts that go in there in each one. And you need you need this cover. Don't forget not to put this cover. You need this cover cuz you got your timing marks here. Without this cover, you can't shoot your timing. So I got the bolts right here I'm gonna put them in by hand for some reason I only have four which makes no sense to me but there's supposed to be two four six of them so we're gonna go ahead and put one down here another one over here I'm gonna start it by hand and then I'll go in with my gun to get it going in there Now I'm going to go ahead and tie those down by hand. Just where they feel that they're a little bit tight. Not too tight. I'll break the plastic cover that's on there. looking very good very promising now I'm gonna put the dipstick on there I did put a little bit of some gray RTV on there you don't have to but in my case I did So now we're ready for the crankshaft pulley. 
this guy right here I'm gonna go ahead and put this guy this is the keyway don't forget your keyway do not lose your keyway because otherwise you'll be in trouble so that guy's in there and now I'm gonna line up this guy so some of you might call this the harmonic balancer but the fact that this motor is balanced internally is called a crankshaft pulley that's the reason why I call it a crankshaft pulley because it's not a balancer so the keyway is in there you guys can see it to the right everything's locked so now we're ready to put the bolt in there this guy this is gonna lock everything into place so now that we got this guy in here we can actually spin this guy and get everything up to top dead center the line that's on this crankshaft should line up perfectly with this line right here and this piston should be all the way at the top that's how we're gonna know i'm gonna go ahead and do the test right now i'm gonna spin it uh, when you spin this guy, you spin it counterclockwise, always. So I'm going to attempt to spin this guy counterclockwise. And right now, we're gonna check it right there should be top dead center over here so remember the white line not the line that has the three there's the one that has the three and then you have a white line the white line is the one that you want for your top dead center and that line should match up this thing right here so if you look through here It should all line up and you can clearly see where the piston's at we can go ahead and put our alternator belt also remember I already got my alternator on here just mock it up and then later on you use adjust it So for now, just so it could be on there. So this is the only things that I have left right here. This guy, but I cannot install this guy yet. He goes right down here. We can't install that yet until we get the T with the feed line that's going to go over the top of the engine on a, to the turbo and the return line for the turbo which is going to plug in down here. Um, the next thing that we got to get, I also have this other baggie. These are all uh, transmission bolts. But either way, the next thing that we have to get is some ARP head studs that are going to hold the head on once we have that we should be pretty much golden to assemble almost everything back together but this thing right now as it is it's ready to be mounted with the transmission so basically to mount the transmission on there that's what it's ready for so i'm going to go ahead and call it a day the next video will most likely be the transmission and the engine going together and then going into the car so i'll catch you guys in the next video till then peace out stay safe catch you guys later remember smash the subscribe button if you're new to the channel peace